Hello, my summer school superstars. Here's Miss JB again. Remember, Miss JB is my teacher nickname. My full name is Miss Jean Baptiste, but you can call me Miss JB. And I am here to read another fantastic book to my summer school superstars. And this book is called There Once Was a Cowpoke Who Swallowed an Ant. And cowpoke is a compound word. We've got, that means two words that are put together and they make one word, but they're not like a contraction because we don't have to cut anything out of the two words. So we have two words, cow and poke. Well, you already know what a cow is. A cow is that animal that goes and a and poke means, for example, you could poke someone. I could poke myself in the cheek. I can poke myself in the arm. I could poke myself in the eye, but that probably wouldn't feel too good. So when we put the word cow and the word poke together, we get the word cow poke. And that's a compound word. We didn't take out any letters. And this is a cow poke. No, not a fat man. A cowboy. A cow poke is another word for cowboy. So this is called, there once was a cow poke who swallowed an ant. And this is written by Helen Ketterman and illustrated by, so the pictures are drawn by Will Terry. This is going to be a very interesting book. And it's brought to you by, of course, Miss JB and Scholastic. So this upcoming school year, when your teacher gives you one of those brochures and one of those little neat paper, feels like a thin newspaper uh, bulletins, and it's for Scholastic and they've got all sorts of neat books in them, you might wanna consider telling your parents about it so that you can get a cool book like this. Let's get started. Oh, it's JB's rushing thing. She's so excited about this book. I need to say to you, happy July 22nd. And also the topic of this lesson is key ideas, details, and character actions. So we're going to uh, think about the ideas in the story. We're going to talk about the details and we are going to think about the character actions. So we're going to think about this cowpoke, this cowpoke's actions or this cowboy's actions, what he does. The standards, which you don't need to worry about, but this is for like principals and other, other people like that. Here are the standards. They are written on the board, but they are also written on this smaller board right here. I'll give you about five seconds to look at it. Perfect. And our objective, so what we want to do today is answer questions about story details and understand the character's actions. So when we look further down on this board, <clears throat> we can see questions and there are six questions. The first question is, who is the main character? The second question is, where is the main character? The third question is, what is the problem? Number four, how did he try to solve it? So how did he try to fix the problem? Number five, did it work? And last but not least, is this story fiction or nonfiction? And then you have to tell me, how do you know? All right, let's take a look. Let's read the book now. Now it's the fun part. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant. Wait for it. I'll get closer. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant, a fiery thing 
with a Texas-sized sting. Here's the cowpoke, and he swallowed an ant. The cowpoke panted, and his voice got higher. Ooh, yippee, tie My stomach's on fire. And you can see inside of his stomach, there goes that fire ant. So he swallowed a spider, leggy and hairy, that was big as a bat and horribly scary. He swallowed the spider to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> That's what pant means, just like a dog does. But spider's legs wiggled and waggled and the cow poke's stomach jiggled and jaggled. And you can take a look at his tummy. It's jiggling. In other words, it's shaking. So we swallowed a road runner, hungry and lean, to dash right in and clean up the scene. He swallowed the road runner to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> but Roadrunner ran so lightning quick that cowpoke started to get seasick. Look at him. He wants to throw up. And I'm going to point out two more compound words. Remember those are two words put together to make a new one, road runner. And down here, see sick. Sea sick means to feel real, like you're gonna throw up basically. And this animal right here is a road runner. Let's go. So we swallowed a lizard, a horned spiky critter, that was scratchy to swallow and terribly bitter. He swallowed the lizard to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> but lizard's skin was scratchy, scritchy, and the cowpoke stomach got terribly itchy. So he swallowed a dillo, the nine banded type that was hard as a rock and smelled right mighty ripe. In other words, that dillo stunk. And a dillo, as you can see in this book, they wrote dillo, but it stands for armadillo. So they're using slang words. So they're just using street words, words that we can use when we're at home or we're in public in the street, but not words that we would write in our papers, not for school. So it's armadillo. He swallowed the dillo to scare the lizard, to chase the road runner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> but Dillo's claws were sharp as a pointy old rake. So the cowpoke wrapped a rattle-tailed snake. Look, he put mustard on the snake. He's gonna eat it like a hot dog. Do, would you eat that? Would you eat a rattlesnake? No? What if you put mustard on it? Would that make it better? Mm, nah. Then he swallowed that snake to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> 
But Snake made his rattles shiver and shake. And the cowpoke's whole body quivered and quaked. What do you think he'll eat next? <sighs> Look at this animal. He swallowed the boar. Let me make sure I didn't skip the page. I did not. Oh, excuse me. I did skip some text. No wonder. So he swallowed a boar, nasty and mean, with the sharpest tusks he'd ever seen. So this is the animal he swallowed next, and these are tusks. This is a boar. What do you think is another name for a boar? A pig, and it's a wild pig. Good job. He swallowed the boar to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> but boar's tusks, which are those horns on the front of his face, jabbed the cowpoke instead. And the cowpoke shouted, I wish I was dead. Look at the cat poke. Does he look like he's having a good time? No. Let's make a prediction. What do you think he'll eat next? There we go. So he swallowed a long Horn. And there goes another compound word. Take a look. Long horn. Long horn, which is this cattle with long horns. Isn't that cool? It says in the name what it has. So he swallowed a long horn with horns like a lance, like a sword. I reckon this critter might be my last chance. He swallowed the longhorn to trample the boar, to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> Let's see if it makes him better. When Longhorn showed up, Boar set off like a flash. Longhorn couldn't catch him to turn him into mash. The cowpoke got mad and stomped on his hat. I'll just do it myself. I reckon that's that. Then he saddled his horse, took his rope off the shelf. If I want it done right, I'll do it myself. So he swallowed his rope, he swallowed his horse, and then he swallowed himself, of course. Can you swallow yourself? In other words, can you take your whole body and swallow it? No. But let's take a look. And also let's take a look at this other compound word. Ta-da! Him. Self, himself. He swallowed himself to lasso the longhorn, so to take the rope to get catch the longhorn, to trample the boar, to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. <sighs> And there goes that pesky ant that he's been trying to catch by swallowing all those other animals. He jumped on his horse and rode with great speed and lassoed the longhorn to start the stampede. And a stampede is when a big group of animals takes off running, 
So they run together. And finally, out raced Longhorn with the lasso of flapping. Out followed Boar, his hooves just a tapping. These are his hooves, so his feet. Out slithered Snake in a very fast crawl. Out came the Dillo, rolled in a ball. Out skittered Lizard, hot on his trail. Out followed Roadrunner, nipping his tail, so biting at his tail. Out raced Spider, Jack Rabbit fast. And then came the, the ant, rid of at last. That pesky ant, that bothersome ant finally came out. The cowpoke climbed off his horse. Whew, I'm all spent. In other words, I'm tired. My get up and go has got up and went. So he pulled his boots off his feet and his hat off his head. Then he shuffled inside and fell into bed. He's going to go to sleep. But look on the last page, what's on his foot? What is that? That's that pesky ant, that bothersome ant. The end. All right, so we got through the book. Let's take a look at the questions and let's answer them. Number one, who is the main character? Well, let's take a look at the book again. Who? is our main character. Who is this book mostly about? That's right, it's about the cow poke or the cowboy. That's what it's about. Now, question number two, where is the character? So let's take a look. Look at the background. So in other words, look at the things that are in the background behind him. We know he's somewhere where there are, where there's a cactus, a roadrunner, an armadillo, a rattlesnake, longhorns. But also, let's see, let's take a look at the first page. You can see there's more cacti there in the background and if I reread, so if I read again what it says on the first page, there once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant, a fiery thing with a Texas sized sting. That's right, he's probably in Texas. And if he's not in Texas, he's somewhere hot and warm like Texas where the cacti grow. So we know where he's at now. He's somewhere warm where there's probably deserts because take a look. You can also see that there are plateaus here. High land that comes up like a table. All right, number three, what is the problem? Let's take a look at the cover. What's the problem? We could even look at the title. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant. The ant was the problem because it was stinging his stomach. So biting his stomach and making him, what's that word again? It starts with a P. Pain, pant. So the problem was, he swallowed an ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. All right, number four. How did he try to solve the problem? Well, 
that's mostly what the book is about, right? He first swallowed the ant. Tried to swallow, he tried to solve or fix the problem by swallowing a spider. Then after he swallowed the spider, he swallowed a road runner. Then he swallowed a lizard. Then he swallowed an armadillo, which he called Dillo. But remember, we can say that at home. We can say that outside with friends. But when we're in school, we use the proper or the right word, which is armadillo. Then he swallowed a rattlesnake. Then he swallowed a boar, which is another word for a wild kind of animal. <laughs> and looks like this without the tusks. Pig, it's a boar though. And then he swallowed the, wait a minute, look at his horns. They are very long. He swallowed a long horn, which is like a cow. Then after he swallowed the long horn, look how surprised the long horn is. He swallowed what? He swallowed the, horse and then he swallowed him self and by the way another compound word is him self and after he swallowed himself he got all the animals to come out of his mouth remember so one of the ways he tried to fix well the only way he tried to fix the problem well one way was to eat all the animals and he still had a problem. So then he decided to go in himself and get the job done and get all those animals out of his mouth. And then he got that ant out of his mouth. The question was, did it work? When he tried to fix the problem, did it work? Well, it didn't work when he tried to swallow all these animals, but it did work when he swallowed himself because remember, he got the, uh, he got the long horn to moving because he got on his horse and chased the long horn. He used his lasso, which is his rope with the uh, loop on the end. And he got the long horn to get all the animals to run in one direction. And that's called a Stampede. Wow. So it didn't work at first, but once he got all the animals to run out of his mouth, he eventually got that ant to come out too. Now here's the last question. Is this story fiction or nonfiction? And how do you know? Remember when I asked you during the story? Can you swallow yourself? Can you swallow yourself? You can't swallow yourself. That's one way that you know that this is fiction. So that means, and by the way, let me remind you, fiction means fantasy. Nonfiction means real life. Fiction means it's make believe. Nonfiction means it can happen in real life. Well, you and I agree, you can't swallow yourself. Now, here's my next question Could you swallow all of these animals all at once and have them in your belly? and still be able to walk and feel comfortable. No. Now, cows, like a longhorn, make burgers. We can make burgers out of cows. You get full with a burger. You couldn't eat the whole cow or an entire boar or a lizard or a rattlesnake or an armadillo or an ant or a spider. You probably shouldn't swallow a spider or an ant, but you couldn't swallow all these animals and be fine. 
So that's another way you know that this story is make-believe. It's fantasy. I have another question for you. Here's my other question. And I'll show you. When you think of teachers, does this picture come into your mind? Do any of your teachers look like this with glasses? Don't answer that. Probably get yourself in trouble. I'll answer for you. No, your teachers do not look like this. No, they don't. That's another way you know that this story is fiction. Look at this. Longhorns don't wear glasses and stand on two legs and have a pointer with a, an easel teaching you or showing you what to read. This is fantasy, make-believe. So those are some ways that you know that this book is fiction, so fantasy, not nonfiction, not real life. Well, boys and girls, summer school superstars, that's it for now. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you in the next video. And the next video is going to be about compound words. Remember, a compound word is like a contraction, except if you remember, we don't have to cut any part of the second word like we did with contractions. All we're going to do is put the two words together to make a new word. I'm excited to teach you about compound words. You're going to like it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.